Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. As ever you can find me over on Instagram at the House of Langford and at Overall Sews. I'm also on Ravelry at Mad X Stitcher. If you're new here, hi! <laughs> um, I'm Madison and this is my little monthly podcast of I kind of do like a roundup of the month before, um, things that I've made, things that I'm working on and any acquisitions as well as any cows and things like that that I might be joining in with. So, hi! <laughs> um, there's also a Facebook page linked to this podcast under the same name. There is a Facebook group and there is a Ko-fi account if you want to support the channel in a small way. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, my likes, my subscribers have been going up quite a bit over the last week or so. Um, if you've come here from Ali of The Little Drops of Wonderful, um, hi! <laughs> um, yeah, so basically I like to share what I have been working on for the month and... So we're going to round up May. Now what I will say at the very beginning is it is not the end of May yet. Um, it is Saturday the 27th of May. Now the reason I am filming four days early is because I am going to Glasgow tomorrow <laughs> and I will be there for the whole week and I'm not coming back till next Sunday which is the 4th, 4th of June. Um, so there won't be any recording time that weekend and yeah I do not have space to take my finishes with me to Glasgow to film them and then bring them back so I'm doing it now which means yes I am going to be working on a couple of these projects um, next week actually no I'm not I have just packed some of my projects that I'm going to take with me and none of them are current whips mainly because they are too big <laughs> so You'll see what I mean in a minute. Anyway, to start off, I always set myself plans or goals for the next month. So my plans for May included finishing the coronation blanket, making up four more squares for the Zuri blanket, which is Tunisian crochet. I wanted to put a border on my lucky puppy blanket and then finish one side of the hexicardi that I started I don't know when. Um, if you look behind me, you'll notice the lucky puppy is still here and does not have a border on it as yet. Um, I've been trying to gather as much cream yarn as possible and I will work on that when I get back. My aim is to try and get that at least completely finished in June. But I'll go through plans for June at the end. <laughs> so we're going to start off with my finishes yeah i have two so one of my goals was to finish the coronation blanket and i can quite happily say it is finished i mean admittedly not all of the ends have been woven in but swings and roundabouts it's done and it's enormous so it has kind of been living in the bag that I got it in um, when I went to EAYF back in March. I think I started it maybe the week, I can't remember when I started it. I think I started it Easter half term, the first week of Easter half term on the Tuesday. I don't remember. Maybe check out my Easter vlogs because that will tell me. <laughs> so I do have yarn left over and I don't really know what to do with it. And also, I'm not sure I feel like it is actually finished because there's only like three bits of red in it. So I've barely used a ball of red. And I don't feel like the actual edge is finished. Let me show you. So this is the blanket. Now, I may have to move my camera back to fit it all in because, like I said, it is quite large. What I have done, though, is... In terms of the motifs that you do at the very end, I actually made four of the Tudor Roses because I wanted one in each corner. I just felt like it balanced it out a bit more. Um, yeah, I don't like things that are odd. <laughs> so 
so I did make four of these but let me push the camera back and I'll show you what it looks like kind of in its full glory um tr I want to try and get a picture of it but I don't think I will before I edit this so let's actually show you <laughs> right I don't know which way up it is that way up see what I mean it's not gonna fit <laughs> so I have put the crown and the orb and scepter in the middle purely because like I said I wanted it to be balanced and that was the only way I felt like I could balance it so yeah <laughs> this actually fits my double bed it is rather wide um yeah I actually really enjoyed doing all of these jewels I actually really enjoyed it I think that's a clever way of doing that and drawing as you go so I've not done drawing as you go before um like I said I've put all four of these I haven't sewn the label on yet though that's the only thing I haven't done and anyway this is the edge that I'm talking about it looks like um it's sparkling around the edge but Sorry for the light, because my light is there. Um, yeah. But if you look, look, see, I've only got one round of red here. One round of red here, and the red in the gems. And obviously in the roses, but... I feel like it needs a few more rounds just to try and use up some of the yarn. But like I said, it is quite big. <laughs> um yeah so that's the coronation blanket anyway <laughs> right i did say it was big um and I, as i said earlier hit look here's all the ends that's the only thing i don't enjoy it so they will get done at some point just not right now um yeah so the yarn for this is Sirdar Hayfield bonus in DK. Hang on, let's get a decent ball band. There we go. Hayfield bonus DK. And I still have all of that. So there's a bit of purple at the top as well. Um I don't know what to do with it. I guess I could make a mini one. Um, like a baby blanket size I don't know how far I'd get but yeah so I'm just glad it's done and I can move on to my next project that actually needs finishing because I have not finished the postcards of love blanket so I wanted to finish this one and then move on to that one and I think this is the first time I finished a cow in the year it started yeah so i'm happy with that but i'm not happy that i've got all of this to weave in <laughs> i have however though look i have woven in all the cream ends in the corners as well as the ends for the motifs that i sewed in so i'm counting that as a win i guess um i'm not fond of this yarn and I was a bit disappointed because the Sirdar Hayfield Bonus Chunky is actually quite soft. This doesn't feel very soft, it feels a bit scratchy. So I'm hoping that once I've woven everything in and I've given it a bit of a soak, that maybe it will soften up a little bit. But yeah, so anyway, let me show you these in a bit more detail. So like I said, I've got the crown and the auburn scepter and I tried to put them the right way round based on the picture I'm hoping they're the right way round I don't care if they're not anymore because that's I'm not redoing this but yeah I am really happy with it and someone needs to tell me to stop joining in cows that I don't have time for yeah so anyway that is project or finish number one 
for May. Now can you see why I did not want to take it all the way to Glasgow and then bring it all the way back again. Now I think that's the first time I have made a project that big and finished it because my temperature blanket, which is bigger than double bed size, is not finished. So yeah, that is my biggest make so far. Is it? I made a C2C blanket in blues. I made nine squares and I stitched them together. I think that might actually be the same size though. Maybe I'll have to measure later. Anyway, um, yeah, that is in DK yarn. I used the recommended hook sizes, so four mil and three point five mil. Yeah, I want to say three point five. So yeah, that is finished. So I can move on. I need to, as I said, I need to sew the label in, but I'm going to put that on the back, I think, once I've sewn all the ends in. So, but I'm still considering it as finished. Yeah, one down. Now, the next finish that I have is something that I started this year. I think I started it around March time. Or maybe early April. I want to say end of March. Um, and it is based on a Critical Role character. Because we got a laser cutter at work. And we were playing with all the settings. And I wanted to try out putting a picture onto something. So you may remember I created some wooden discs. Well, I've, got one, I've got one here. This is the mandala one that I did. And I did one of a Critical Role character. So, this is my bag! So this is the bit we la I laser engraved. So it's kind of, let me bring my camera, there we go. So, it's like a half tone, so there's dots. Um, I have used two strands of, what is it, mustard in Starcraft Special chunky and i used two balls in total for this um for the mustard i used every single bit of it now i may have showed you this um maybe in last month's podcast maybe the month before don't remember um and i just had basically this bit done and put together um but i didn't have the toggle i didn't have the strap and I didn't have this blue band at the bottom. So, what I did was the other day, I, I'm on a kick really, I'm on a finishing kick, so I decided that I was going to try and finish this. I made the strap, and I had like this much left over, which is just enough to sew the button on, and I figured, what am I going to do? So I looked in my stash and found a ball of gold, but then realised actually that's not really going to go with this for this character and then remembered that i had this blue and the character is gold and blue because he's a robot so i have added a band of storm blue along the bottom which is attached to the d-rings on both sides and then the handle is attached to a d-ring with a swivel clasp on it there we go and yeah it's just a really cool bag. Look, it sits right on my hip. I can wear it cross body or I can wear it just on one side and it will still sit on my hip, which is brilliant. So I think any shows I go to in the future, I'm going to be taking this bag with me. Yeah, I really, really enjoyed doing it. And I completely made it up. I have not been able to find any patterns that show me how to work with the wooden discs in any format so all I basically did was put two double crochets into every hole on the disc and then do one double crochet all the way around and then I increased so I had to count how many stitches I had and then try and work out how I could increase that like what division what was it divisible by and i think it was eight i don't remember because i made this bit a little while ago so 
I did the exact same on the back. The back one's just plain. Um, my son did say to me the other day that actually I probably could have put the Critical Role logo on there, but I felt like that would be a bit too far um, in terms of copywriting. I will find out who the artist is for this particular piece of work, this drawing. Um, it is the official artwork they've been using in the show. So basically I just went and found the first image when decided to try out the machine with that one and I really like this character so oh actually I know what can go in this so for my birthday and Christmas my husband went on to the critical role, critical role, critical role shop and got me the card wallet of FCG so that can go in here yeah so I'm a very happy bunny yeah so I used I think I used a six mil no a five mil I think I used a five mil hook um even though it's two strands of chunky I did use two strands of chunky to do the band as well just to keep it all the same um but yeah I am really happy with this bag <laughs> right that is the only those are the only finishes I have this one but i have a few whips to show you as well so i started a dress a crochet dress i am going to carry on crafting in july the very first weekend of july and i figured i would make something to wear for that event um i have not given myself enough time to do this though but i think i'm about halfway up the front and the back because i'm doing them in unison so it means sorry fluff <laughs> um they'll be finished at the same time and then i can just join the sides together um now i am using cotton soft dk for this and the pattern is meant to be done in four ply and i'm still using a four mil hook the pattern is the good vibrations dress by the missing yarn it is currently in my yarn stash bag that i finished um last month this month did i finish this this month i don't remember that either there's a lot of things i don't remember this month or last month it's been one of those months yeah so anyway it's in my yarn stash bag and yeah <laughs> so the missing yarn is cassie ward i am using a I can get it out of the bag knit pro hook just a four mil and i have two of these no, and they look the same so there's no point me showing you both but i am at this stage so i'm now about to do the next set of decreases and i think it's going to be too big as it is so i'm going to do two sets of, of decreases and see if that then sits better on my hips and waist because you start from the bottom and work your way up so i am on to repeat three of my color order you can see my color order here starts at french navy at the bottom down here then we have clementine then we have antique gold ecru hot pink no yeah hot pink might be bright pink then we have uh, azure lime ecru again Lavender, mint, ecru again. Um, this one is candy floss, cherry, French navy, opal. Back to ecru. Then we have oyster, azure, clementine, and lavender. That is my order, and it ends with an ecru rope. And then I just repeat that colour order all the way to the top, but following the pattern. So it started off a bit wider at the bottom down here. And it's now, I finished my first set of decreases here, which gives it the A-line shape. So I'm just about to start on the next set of decreasing. And yeah, that the hot pink at the top was my last row before I go into the next bit of pattern for decreasing. So, like I said, I have done two at the same time, one front and one back. And I am using, here we go, King Cole 
Cotton Soft, which is 100% cotton. And I have 14 colours <laughs> to use. Now, I have got a couple of extra skeins or balls of the Ecru because obviously I'm using that, I think, five times in a pattern repeat. I've got quite a lot of ends that I'm going to end up weaving in though. Again, I'm tempted to just leave it and have like fringing as I dance. But yeah, I'm really hoping to get this done. I think when we come back, I've got maybe three weeks to do it. So this will be the one thing I solely focus on when, we, when I come back from Glasgow. Now I can't take it with me because there's 14 balls that I'm working from. Um, and obviously that is quite a big bag. When you've got 1400 grams of yarn and i'm already on the second ball of ecru let me show you now this actually the pattern um picture isn't a full picture it's only the top half so that is that one if i can get a picture from instagram or from the pattern page on ravelry then i'll pop that in as well um Anything I mention in this podcast will be linked in the description box. So if you want to go and check anything out that I've talked about, whether it's um, patterns, yarn, um, shops that I mentioned, um, yeah, everything is there. And the yarn for this, plus the yarn for FCG bag, were, are both from my local yarn hut, my local yarn shop, which is called the Little Yarn Hut, also known as All Tangled Up. <laughs> So, yeah, I'm buying quite a lot from um, my local shop at the minute. Um, the coronation blanket kit that I got, though, I got that from the Lost Sheep Wool Shop, which is based in Great Yarmouth, and I bought that at EAYF, as I mentioned earlier, in March. So, that's the main whip that I have been working on. But I have a couple more, so let's keep going. Okay, this week I have put in some rounds into my cherished granny square blanket, which is in my Made by Penguins bag. And it's called the Cherished Granny Square because I'm using Cherished Yarn by King Cole. I have put a couple of rounds. I think I'm almost done on my second round of white. But I'm not going to go on about it because I don't think I've put... Where's my, ch where's my stitch marker? There is my stitch marker. That's where you last saw it. Here, on the end of the green. Um, so I've done three and a half rounds. But I figured I would show you anyway. Again, this is not coming with me, although I feel like it should. Because I can just sit and do that in the car. Um, I mean, you could. That bag can go on my back. It is a big drawstring bag, so... You never know. I mean, it is quite getting quite weighty, but I've already packed several products, so yeah, I think that's a bit too big to be taken with me as well. Anyway, so those are two whips, and I'm sure I have another one, so let's have a look for that. Right, so I have one in my, what I'm considering, I call this my beginner's bag, because this is the bag that I take to all the beginner's workshops that I teach. <laughs> Um, I have, I was showing a student how to make African flowers. So, I have made an African flower. Um, you may remember me making quite a few in 2020, 2021, um, to make a hippo for the hippolong. Um, yeah, so I've just used some leftover Starcraft DK in black lipstick and citron and then I've got a little bit of hint of silver here as well I've just used a four mil hook for that and I don't know what I'm gonna do with it because I really don't need any more whips do I <laughs> so I could make quite a few of these I think it looks like a tulip though it looks like a flower I mean I know it's supposed to be a flower it's an African flower but it looks like a tulip so I might um, just swap the colours around a little bit and just make a few more and then put them into a blanket maybe. I don't really know. Um, yeah, so anyway, I really enjoyed working on it and I might make some more. I don't know, but we'll see. I could make it into like a bag or a cushion. 
<laughs> Maybe even a waistcoat. I don't know yet. But it's in my little grey girl bag with my um, critical roll pin. Um, I can never remember where that's from. But the bag is from the little grey girl. There is her little, little logo. So yes, that has random Aussie on it. Random hooks and just random samples. And I think the last thing I have to show you, because I don't remember how many of these I've shown you, I have now completed four squares for my um, for the Zuri blanket. So I think I showed you square one. I have square two. No, this isn't two. That's four. Let's try again. Square two. It looks like little bricks. Square three is boxes. And then square four, which you got a sneaky peek of a minute ago, um, is this one. So I've just finished this one the, today, actually. I did some today. But they're not square anymore. They're not quite square. So they are going to need blocking to try and get them to shape. But yeah, this one's like a, li a little optical illusion. So it looks like a square within a square yeah so yeah i have four i um there are 11 blocks currently out and available to work um i'm trying to catch myself up a little bit i can do one a day so that's what i'm trying to if i do find the time to make one i will just make it from start to finish so i had originally did the i think i got to here I think I got to the bottom of the pattern start and this one before I picked it up today and I've just done the rest today because I figured that I could but yeah that is the last whip that is being worked up with a six mil Tunisian crochet hook which I've just packed away and I'm using Deramore's Studio Special DK which is a discontinued yarn these ones have been made in cream and I don't know what blue it is, but it's a blue. Um, and I cannot find any more cream yarn anywhere. I have tried. I found um, someone online on eBay that had white listed for sale. And then it turned out they didn't have any white. And I'd already then bought more blue and a few other colours um, to try and make something with the yarn that I do have. So yeah i don't know whether to just get a different cream i found a ball of white just one ball of white um which is not going to go very far i have managed to do four squares from one ball of each color so far and i have what i believe enough to do one more square so that gives me five per two balls of yarn there are 25 squares to this blanket. So I'm a little bit concerned that I am not going to be able to find yarn that matches. And I don't want them all to be completely different. That was the mate. The original plan was to do them all completely different. But yeah, I need a contrast. I need a light contrast. And I don't think there's enough contrast between like two different shades of the same colour for this particular work. So those are my Zuri blanket um squares it is by Nitta Notta um the pattern is available on Ravelry and like I said we are up to square 11 they are being released one every fortnight and it will last the whole year so you will see more of these <laughs> now that we've got my finishes and my whips out of the way it's time to move on to acquisitions and even though I am not supposed to be buying yarn, I have somewhere bought yarn. Because apparently I cannot control myself. <laughs> anyway, so, what I've also done though is bought a few bags to put new projects in. So, yeah. And I found a new company to buy from that makes scrunchies and pin badges and earrings and they are just so cute. 
so let's get started i have quite a long list written down and i have i am i think i may miss some <laughs> so i may just get a pen to tick them off <laughs> okie dokie i am literally just going to grab stuff and show you because that's quite a bit like i said so i have been on amazon so i got a bit um what's the word i'm looking for inspired by the fcg bag so i went on to amazon i'd been looking at these for a little while anyway and i have bought some bases are you going to get glare and crinkle um or russell so i bought there's four bases in there all different colors and they have little metal feet on them um and the holes are already cut out and then i have bought some handles that i'm hoping will go with them there's four so five, five different um handle sets in there so i want to see if i can make or attach those in some way and make a professional looking bag um the yarn hut has loads of really nice cotton yarns as you've seen from my dress um so i'm thinking i'm going to use some of those to whip up quite a nice bag because the handles have really small holes in them so i need to work out how i'm going to attach them i do have some nylon thread like thicker nylon thread which i used to use for kumahimo so maybe i'll be using that but anyway i have bag bases and bag handles um, it means I might also have to dig out the bag clasps that I have, which would make it really professional, wouldn't it? Hmm. And so I have those. And whilst I was there, I also picked up some fabric pens, purely because I have been doing some painted bags at school and we do not have fabric pens. So I want to outline the latest bag that I have painted. All I have done is M and O. Um on top of each other and then try to do like a cmyk sort of thing going on so i've used magenta blue or cyan and yellow and then i went to outline it in black but i didn't have any fabric pens so i picked those up so i can use those because i've got a feeling that the ones that i do have which i can't find are probably dry anyway so i have some fabric pens now so i can finish that off so let me take those off my list and I'll show you the next few bits. <laughs> next up, I have this amazing project bag. Isn't it pretty? Look at the geisha ladies. It is just, it is so pretty. And it is gold. It is actually shiny. So... It's got a drawstring and it's got tabs at the top, one on either side, and it's got the drawstring and it's got like with these big wooden beads on them, which I think is really nice. It's like a big box and there's quite a few bits in here. So I have picked this up from Woolridge, Wool, it's Woolridge, but I think it is pronounced Woolridge. Um, Woolridge Crafts, let me do a budget. Yeah, Woolwich Crafts, and I have picked up two bags, both with like an oriental inspired fabric. So, but inside this bag are a few other things that I have picked up. So let me put this down for a sec. And apologies for the rustling. Now, what I loved about this is that as soon as I opened the parcel, I could smell lavender. And the reason for that is what she's actually done is used like off cuts of the fabric to make little lavender sachets and then popped them in the bag so there's one for each project bag which is amazing and i think that lavender keeps moths away so there's a double bonus especially if i'm going to be putting yarn in here so yeah they they just smell amazing and what i will show you is this is the label inside and look at just look at the lining it's really really pretty i'm so so glad that i spotted these on facebook and immediately went to her etsy page and i was like i need that now um this is the other one i got i got a zippy one 
which has a little dragonfly on the zipper pull which can be used as a stitch marker because it's got a lobster clasp on it again the label inside this one's just lined with purple and it's boxed at the bottom so it sits up flat and it has a little loop so you can hold onto it as well so yeah i'm really happy with these i'm so pleased that i picked these up because they're just so pretty and she has a few more still on her um etsy page so i'll put the details for that down below i'm so, i was so tempted to buy another one and then realized that actually i probably don't have enough money <laughs> for that um but yeah so i have two new project bags so in addition to these two project bags um i was watching laura of the lonely knitter i think it was it may have been the new her last one or it may have been a previous one fluff um and she mentioned getting a makeup bag that she uses as a project bag from uh by who is it by elizabeth scarlet and so i went to vintage to have a look for one <laughs> And I, I think the one that Laura has is green. I managed to find one of those, a brush purple pink. And look at the golden bees. And even the, I'm not sure you're going to be able to see that. Even the um, zipper pull has like an embossed thing in it. So Elizabeth Scarlet yeah so i don't know what project is going to go in here yet but i picked that up off of vintage and it is just so pretty there's only like a little marks a couple of marks on it because of the fabric um and obviously it's um velvet so it's a little bit difficult to really wash it um but i think it just needs a good brush to be honest so yeah i have this one and then talking of laura from the lonely knitter I completely forgot to order the Marvel Minis Club um, and she was quite, um, what's the word I'm looking for? She was very lovely and said that she had some spares so I managed to get the Marvel Minis as well for last month. So this is Iron Man inspired as we can see from the yellow and gold. So there are five minis, they are 20 grams each. And it is on, um, I think it's sock weight, superwash merino and 25% nylon. So I have five. So they are going to go in this bag because that's all Laura inspired. <laughs> but yeah, I really like those. So every month, um, Laura is doing a mini club series. And it is different. Every other month is different. So one set of months will be marvel inspired and i think the other set is disney inspired um yeah that sounds right so yeah um i've managed to get both of the marvel inspired ones i just need to remember where i put the first lot so i can put them in here with this one but yeah so that's the next thing off of my list so also because you know i'm not supposed to be buying yarn the crinkling earlier was the knit knitical roll yarns from Corner of Craft, um, which are all based on critical role characters, which is Dungeons and Dragons. So I bought Chetney, um, which I believe is called Respect the Alpha. Yeah, Respect the Alpha. And then the, this is the first time I've bought the club yarn though as well. So every month she does a mystery yarn based on one of the characters. And it could be from any of the free campaigns. So this month was actually Grog from series one. And it's called I Would Like to Rage. So they are both played by the same person. They're both played by um, Travis. 
So you have Grog from Campaign 1 and I have Chetney from Campaign 3. They are very similar, but I don't mind. My plan is to try and get one of his character from Campaign 2 and put them all together. Yeah. I really, really like these. So they've both got like bluey tones to them, but one's got more like gold tones, whilst the other one's got red tones. Um, but yeah, I've got both DK, 100% Superwash Blue Faced Lester. So it's 100 grams, 225 meters each, which is 246 yards. So I just want one more and I'm going to try and make a top with them, I think. But yeah, so I have, I think this might actually be the first time I've ordered yarn from Hannah of the Corner of Craft. Normally I just pick up the odd skein at the shows that I go to. Um, so yeah, I'm really pleased with these and I cannot wait to find the perfect top to put them into. Okay, so I also visited another yarn shop. It's not my local yarn shop, it's my not so local yarn shop. <laughs> um, and I picked up some fibre spates purely because I saw the colours and could not walk out of the shop without them. I bought three. So these are from the yarn dispensary in Faversham and I have a purple which is blueberry. I have a green or a tealy green which is sea green and then I have a pink which is let me see let me see um mixed magentas so I absolutely love these colors and I want to try and do something that is like block block color in crochet because they are just so nice together. Like I can put them in any order and they work. So yeah, it feels really nice. It is vivacious four ply. So it is 100% superwash merino. And it has, they have 365 meters, which is 395, uh, 399 yards per 100 grams. And it says to use a 2.5 or a 3.5 needle with it. Yeah, so I might end up using a free mill hook um, to make something up in this because I don't think I want to make a top with a 2.5 crochet hook. So if you know of any really nice um, crochet tops patterns, please send them my way. Put them in the comments down below and I will check them out because I really want to make something with these three. Thanks. <laughs> Two more left because the last one on my list is actually the pattern for the Good Vibrations dress and the yarn for it. So you've already seen that. <laughs> um, yeah, I have, I have received, I ordered a flower headband kit from the Pigeon's Nest. Now I've not ordered from her before, but I'm going to be um, kind of like camping with her at the craft carry on crafting event that I mentioned earlier so I have bought the flower headband kit to do for that event to go with my dress um so yeah it's sorry for the rustling it is all in the bag I've only ever opened this once to see what was in here so it basically comes with everything you need to make this headband it also has <laughs> stay angry, eat cake. <laughs> so we've got a sticker. I might have to put that on my bottle for work. Um, we have... <laughs> That's so funny. Um, so we have a... There's a thank you card here. It's got a darning needle on it to weave in any ends. No, I dropped the button! Um, it has... The yarn to make it up with, I have Drops Paris in um, white, which is 100% cotton. And then I have a piece, so I have, I have green yarn. I'm assuming they're the same um, 
yarn type and I have yellow yarn as well. It also comes with a hook, which is a free mill hook, which is good because I can't find my tulip free mill. So that's quite handy. And I dropped the button, so I'm going to have to find that and then come back to you. I think that's in the right place. Um, so yeah, it comes with a daisy button, which helps you fasten it at the bottom, I think. I will double check. Um, but it also obviously comes with a printed pattern. So this is the pigeon's nest. And this is uh, Rebecca. I think she goes by Bex. Um, or Becky. And it's just it's just so so much fun um and there's just such big daisies and i'm really looking forward to wearing it there's a few of us doing making one each for the um event so i am actually taking this with me to glasgow so that i can work on it on my way up um and get it done so that i know i am ready for carry on crafting <laughs> So we have that one. I'm just going to package it all back up and pop it in my um, pop it to one side so I don't forget to pack it because that would be really sad. And make sure I've got everything to go with it. And my oh, do I should should I take my sticker with me? I might leave the sticker here just for a little while. Um, yeah, and I'll put my face with it so I don't forget. So I can now pack that ready for Glasgow. I'm scratching everywhere. My face seems to have completely broken out today. Oh, there's even some fridge in here as well to sew the button on. <laughs> Let's make sure that goes in there as well. Um, yes, so I have my kit ready to go. And I have two more things to show you. So first off is a new company that I have found. It is not yarn related. It is more geeky Pokemon related. <laughs> this is Galaxy Games and she's a brand new company. Brand new business and recent, literally brand new launched, I think, two weeks ago. And I was one of the first to order. So I was very excited. I have picked up some laser cut pin badges in Mario because they're really cool at first I think I thought they were earrings but I don't mind that they're pin badges <laughs> um yeah so I have those and on the back it's got the little Game Boy as well the logo which is cute and I picked up a giant what I consider a giant a giant scrunchie see what I mean by giant and it has got Pokemon on it in their little um, Game Boy cards, the original Game Boy cards. So we've got Charmander. We have Bulbasaur here as well. There's Bulbasaur, which is really cute. Um, on the other side, so if I try and spin out the fabric a little bit, there we go. We also have. Squirtle, there he is, and his blue one, that was the Game Boy one I had, and then we have Pikachu for the yellow one as well, so, yeah, I'm going to pop that in my hair, <laughs> that's going to be one of the new things I wear to work, I think, so I picked up this one, this is the largest size she does, the largest, uh, so the largest whip, they're measured in whip, um, to have this one. And there was another peak, uh, Pokemon one as well, which is this one, which is like little doodles. So we've got Snorlax. There is Mew there as well. We've got Pikachu. There's a bit of Psyduck showing on that side as well. Let's flip it over. So we've got... Ay, ay, ay. We've got... Um, is that Clefairy? There's a Togepi on here as well. Little tiny Togepi. And Bulbasaur. I'm showing you completely upside down. But you get the idea here. Yeah. And a few Pokeballs. So that's more of the medium size. Which I think is like your standard. Your standard size of scrunchie. So I have that one. 
and I also purchased a notebook because I keep using up all my notes at work and this one just says happy thoughts and has a little rainbow cloud at the bottom and I thought it was really pretty so yeah it's really good paper it feels so nice and it's very professional yes I'm very impressed with this and also I got a little freebie which is really cute and it's got little crocodiles there's a normal scrunchie so this is a medium size again there's got little crocodiles on it which i think is just really cute yeah so i'm very pleased with all of my purchases so do go check her out she's done a recent she recently had a scrunchie drop um so she put quite a lot of new scrunchies up on her website and i had to really restrain myself from going on there and buy more yeah so that's that that's galaxy games and that is leah i love it leah thank you so much um yeah i'm definitely going to be buying more i just don't know when <laughs> because i need to kind of save my money but there we go yeah so i have some scrunchies i really want some earrings though that's what's on my list next so yeah i'll get some earrings next time and i have one last thing to show you now you may remember me saying that i ordered some yarn whilst i was at eayf and it has finally arrived it is from castleview yarns and it is my perfect red basically it is the moulin rouge based yarn and i don't know if i want to take it out of the packaging because it's really pretty but it's gonna rustle okay. this is castleview yarns logo it's castleviewyarns.com i have purchased from them before and this is really pretty i have bought four skeins yes four skeins of fly away on the new soft merino dk yarn which is really really soft it's really soft on the camera it's coming out like a whiny color and i guess it is kind of a wine color but it's a very deep red very deep red well it didn't want a bright red so basically she has a sample on her stand of the love note sweater in red yarn which is called poison apple and she didn't have enough of it in the dk for me to buy it on the day and so we saw the dk the new dk and ordered that instead as you do so yes i have four skeins to make a love note sweater that is the plan it has always been the plan these are destined to be a love note sweater and i think what kind of cinched the deal for me was that i spoke to robin of a crafty bird the crafty bird um back at wolf and mabby wool show and she said she had made one and it was really easy and that was a she was a beginner knitter at the time and i still consider myself to be a beginner knitter even though my friends keep telling me that i'm not but yeah so this will become a love note sweater and i'm really looking forward to knitting it up i'm really looking forward to wearing it but i have so many other projects at the moment that i don't have the time to do it so i'm wondering whether this will be like my maybe like a summer project into winter um but yeah so i have four and i love it it's 100 percent superwash merino and it is 225 meters per 100 grams so yeah i do not own enough red yarn let's just put it that way so now i have four <laughs> and i do believe that is everything i have been rabbiting on 
for so long. Anyway, the light has now gone because it is nearly half past nine. I have packed my suitcase full of clothes to take with me tomorrow. I'm going for the week. I'm going to explore Glasgow. I am going to go to Ikea, to Argos, to furnish his new flat. Uh, my husband, basically, my husband is moving to Glasgow as of tomorrow. And because he has got a new job and it is in Glasgow. Because, yeah, that's what happens to us. Um, now, I was excited to go. I think it's now just getting a little bit real. And he's kind of been annoying me <laughs> for the past couple of weeks. I've barely seen him because he's been here, there and everywhere. Um, making sure he says goodbye to everybody. And he's been stressing me out. So I am stressed, ready for tomorrow. I think that's why I'm all broken out, out here. And I had like some red on my chest earlier. So um, I'm hoping that after this week we'll relax a little bit. Um, but I am going to meet up with a couple of friends in Galashiels. Galashiels? Galashiels. Um, next weekend. So we're going to another yarn show. Um, but yeah, I'm hoping to try and do like a bit of vlogging over the half term. Um, because I will be there for the whole week. And it is bank holiday on Monday as well. So maybe you'll see a bit more of me next week as well um i don't actually know now if i'm going to get time to edit this because it is so late but i will try anyway thank you for joining me this month um and seeing what i've been getting up to in terms of my plans for june can't believe we're in june already in terms of my plans for june obviously i want to get some more of the zuri blanket squares done i am going to do the flower headband and I have packed a couple of projects that I'm hoping I can finish while I'm away so you'll just have to wait and find out what they are but thank you so very much for joining me I hope you come back again um, as always please like and subscribe and I will see you all again next month if you don't watch the vlog <laughs> anyway take care bye